Wow. Whoa. These are some huge air guns. Wait a minute. Have I shrunk? Stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. It's good to be back to full size again, that's for sure. Anyway, uh, today we're going to take the mystery out of the Bushmaster MPW, multi-purpose weapon, that's your MPW, and the DPMS, and that's going to be the M4 SBR, short barreled rifle, i.e. short barreled rifle. Anyway, these are both made by Crossman. One is the Bushmaster, obviously one is the DPMS, and uh, they basically have identical specs on them. They're both, uh, they take the identical magazines, both of them use the exact same magazines, they're both 25 round magazines. They're both, um, take dual CO2s in, in both of them, and they both are claimed around 430 feet per second, which, um, with the steel BBs, and obviously we're going to test that. But what we're going to do today, we're going to compare the two of them, and uh, we're going to go from there. First, if we start out with, let's just start out with the DPMS real quick. We'll get this one out of the way. So the DPMS, it, ha it comes with a flip-up sight, which these sights are actually um, adjustable for windage. There's no elevation adjustment. So one of the best things to do is just to get rid of these, which is this simple. Take these off, because honestly, they're not not very good. And get yourself a red dot sight. Just throw a little red dot sight on there and then you're ready to go. There you go. So you got a little red dot sight, we're all ready to go. But anyway, um, this gun here uh, weighs about six and a half pounds. It obviously doesn't come with the bipods. I put that on there. But the, um, this one specifically is about 30 inches at the closed level. You can change, this is, the handle here is AR compatible, so that means you can change out the handle. Um, the, the actual buffer tube is not, this comes stock, but it's, it's, it's adjustable in about six positions, and it's actually really nice, so I don't think you'd even want to change that out anyway. Um, other than that, this has a lot of the Picantini rails, they're pretty long, it does come with this foregrip, which is very nice for gripping the gun. So, and this is all in black. They actually make a cam camo color one of these now. So, let's pull this one out of the way and bring back our Bushmaster. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit shorter. This one, the difference with this one is the stock here, the buffer tube, this is also AR compatible. So, you actually can slide this off and change out and put a new um, um, buttstock on it. For instance, like this one I've got, you can you can slide this one on it. So you can totally accessorize this, however you want to do that. But anyway, and this is like a six position stock as well. Um, this comes with a red dot sight. To be honest with you, it's a very cheap red dot sight. You have two positions, it's kind of a low and a high. It's a single red dot. The, um, the dot is not very crystal. Um, you can get some aftermarket ones that are very inexpensive that do a much, much better job. Um, this does come with the short Picatinny rails. As you can tell, I put the rubber fillers in here. just makes that soft, softer to grip. Um, I put the bipod on here just for display. It does not come with the bipod. So, um, other than that, um, pretty much the same gun as the other one. So let's, uh, let's show you how to change out this... Uh, or load up this magazine real quick. Okay, so here's your magazine. It holds your BBs. You got a slide rail here for your BBs, and then it holds this holds your two CO2s. So you just pop this cover off, just like this. Okay. Now the key with this is you need to load this one, the outside one here, first. That's the first one that you need to load first. And I always, when I'm doing, um. Any CO2s, I, I'd like to put just a drop of the Pell gun oil on it. It helps lubricate it. So let's just set that one down in there. Then we'll set the second one down in there. What's really convenient about this is um, this actually comes with a built-in wrench right in the magazine. So you just pop this little baby out right here. And this one even says on this right here, 
it says specifically um, this one first. So you're, we're going to do this one first. And it's just as simple as you get a little puff, snug it up, and you go for the second one. And that one we didn't even hear. And then snap your little Allen wrench back in there. There you go. Cover slides back on just like this. And you're in. Now these come with a BB speed loader and it kind of holds this spring back at the same time you push it down. To tell you the truth, it's a pain in the ass. This is what I like. You just pull this back with your finger and you take one of just the standard little BB loaders. These things just pop right in there. I mean, there's nothing to it. So you see this. And it's full. That's it. Boom. It's loaded. So now you have a 25 round magazine. That one's hot, ready to go. But keep in mind, these are identical magazines for both guns. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so it, it, let's do a little comparison out there, see how we, well they do. The price of this one, this one's actually retails for uh, close to $200. I think it's $199. And it comes with this site, which I told you is not overly worth it. And then our DPMS, this one here retails for about $179 without the site, just with the pop up sites. But as I told you before, they're only adjustable. These pop up sites are only adjustable for windage not for elevation. So um, with that, let's uh, move on and uh, see what type of performance that we get out of these. Before we get started here, could you please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button below. And uh, if you like the content, if you like what you're seeing, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And don't forget, if you'd like to be notified of our new videos that come out, I try to put one out a week depending on um, how much time we have. Um, please hit the little bell and you'll be notified when they come out. So let's get down to business. Okay, we've got our Bushmaster here, our MPW, multi-purpose weapon. And we're going to do a few shots over the crony and see what we get. Um, we're going to be shooting the 5.1 grain um, Daisy Zinc BBs. Those are the most accurate. Now, they're claiming this will get 430 feet per second. Now, this is a warm day. We're probably in the mid-80s, maybe a little less than that now. When I started, it was obviously pretty warm. So let's see what we get as far as feet per second goes. All right. No reading there. 480. 477. 478. Let's do two more. 475. And 466. So there you go. Um, we're definitely getting uh, some good feet per second out of that. So let's go ahead and try our DPMS next and we'll go from there. We're back with our DPMS, our, um, our SBR. And let's see what type of feet per second we have. We're also going to be using the Daisy 5.1 grain zinc BBs with this one as well. And this they claim an identical 430 feet per second. But I tell you, this is a perfect day for CO2s. It's in the mid-80s, probably a little bit cooler than that right now. But let's see what type of feet per second we can get out of this. All right, let's go shot number one. I don't know if that read. I don't know if there's an issue with this magazine or what. But that locked back. Okay, let's go. 499. Okay. 500. Jeez. Error. Four ninety four. Five oh six. And I'll be honest with you, I'm using the same magazine I used in the other gun. Four ninety three. Let's just keep going. Let's see what else we get here. Yeah, I'm thinking the warm weather has really affected these CO2s. That's why this gun's locking back. Because it's shooting with such force. 490. Well, that definitely exceeded our expectations as far as feet per second. But let's move on to the next step. Okay, let's see how our DPMS performs. See what type of grouping we got. We're about um, exactly 30 feet back. Okay, maybe it's 31. But it's close. Okay. Anyway, we're going to see what type of grouping we get out of this. 
and then we'll give our Bushmaster a try. So let's see what we got going here. We're looking for grouping. Keep that in mind. I'm thinking this is cocking back because it's a warm day. Or it could be this magazine. I'll try a different magazine. That one worked fine. Alright, that should be enough. That should be enough to see how well our grouping is. Let's give the Bushmaster a shot and uh, we'll go from there. Now we got our Bushmaster and we'll give that a shot for accuracy. This has this sight on here which I mentioned before it's about as cheap as you can get. The entire thing's plastic, the red dot is not very defined and it moves on you. Now I have an aftermarket one if this doesn't turn out well I'll go ahead and put a different one on and we'll try it again but let's just see what type of grouping we get with this gun in a um, stock um, setup. So let's see what we get here. I'm shooting the same Daisy BBs Okay, six, seven, and let's do eight. Actually, not too shabby of some shooting for that one. All right, let's move on to our next session. Just in case you're curious what the trigger weight is on the DPMS, let's give it a quick test. Got my Lyman trigger gauge here. Let's just do one pull and see where we're at. Eleven pounds, four point four ounces. Not surprising. Uh, it doesn't feel quite that heavy, but it is. What else can we say? Anyway, let's uh, give the Bushmaster a yeah, shot. Let's, let's test the Bushmaster's is. trigger and see how close it is, similar it is, to our DPMS. All right. We set our trigger gauge, and Ten pounds, fourteen ounces. So just a hair bit lighter for some reason, but it's all within that ballpark. So that's where we're at. Let's move on. No review would be complete without a little plinking. We've got to do a little plinking. We got to see how this does. Um, we're still about thirty feet back. You know, actually, with this rifle, with the accuracy that we've demonstrated, um, you could actually go a little farther back. But we're gonna, we're just gonna go at this distance. And let's see how well we do. Let's start with a couple of little shotgun shells up there on the top. I mean, seriously? It's this accurate? Yes, a BB rifle. This accurate. I mean, look at this. And it's, it's pumping some velocity out. All right, let's go. How about that little piece? Unbelievable. I mean, seriously. Double tap that, triple tap, oh wait, there we go, and how about the little bell, oh my goodness, this is one of the most accurate BB rifles around, they really are, this is terrific, let's move on to the next segment. Do you really think I would leave you guys hanging without showing you the fully automatic portion of these guns? Hey, what's better than one? Two, so let's see what we can do here, alright, whoa, we got a malfunction here. There we go. That's your fully automatic. They go quick, don't they? But uh, great little guns, that's for sure. Let's move on to the next section. Let's wrap this up. Um, well, both these guns are a lot of fun. There's no question about it. Um, like I said, they're pretty much identical. You saw the performance was a little bit different. We got up to 500 feet per second on our DPMS. And honestly, um, if you saw I was having some magazine issues, it was an exceptionally warm day and I think it was putting a lot of pressure in the CO2. And it was, it, was, it was driving that bolt so hard it was locking back after some single shots. Once the CO2 cooled down a little bit, and it was functioning just perfect. But um, 
500 feet per second, I think this was in the high fours. So, I, I mean, roughly the same thing. It definitely exceeded uh, the manufacturer's expectations on a warm day. So you can say that's probably your best case scenario as far as velocity goes. We didn't talk about it a little bit, but there is a setting on the side here that has the setup both for fully auto, which is straight back, or semi-auto, and then you have your safety set up here. So you've got, you've got fully auto, all the way back, and then um, semi-auto, and then full. Um, these guns also can be field stripped, and let me demonstrate that real quick for you. You can actually break them down, which is pretty interesting. Obviously, you're going to remove your CO2. If you don't mind, I'm going to put these on so I can see a little bit. There's a pin right here in the back. You just have to push this pin outward right here. See that small one? And then just grab the end of this. Boom. And what will happen is then this will just come apart just like this. And if you want to bring the front part loose, this has a little pin in here as well, and that will pop out just like this. There we go. Okay. And boom, just like that. Um, and here you go. You can actually take this thing apart. You can clean it if you want to. Um, ironically, I want to talk about something. When I I first got an original, uh, one of the uh, first of the DPMSs that came out, they actually had an issue with the seal in here. It was a there's a, a little green seal that's actually inside here. I'm not going to take it out and show it to you, but there was a seal that was inside here. And what would happen is all of a sudden you're shooting the gun, you go to shoot it again and the thing wouldn't even fire. Nothing would happen. What was happening is there was a little seal that was actually going inside out and it was flipping. And when that happened, uh, the gun would no longer fire. So how um, Crossman corrected that is they just put a little teeny C-clip on it, on the little shaft where the seal sits and it took care of the problem just like that. But yeah, the first one I had when it came out, that's exactly what happened. That was left and right that was happening to them. Um, I read a lot of blogs where that information was coming across. So they obviously corrected that. Anyway, so the fact that you can tear these things down, that is terrific. Um, gun, these guns are a lot of fun. Um, do I have a preference between the two? I personally kind of like the DPMS a little bit better because I like the longer the railing. Um, um, this comes now in tan, so if you want to get it in tan, you can. However, there's benefits to the other rifle as well. The other rifle, you can change the buttstock on it. It's AR compatible, which is terrific. Let's, let's slow this thing back together, um, which is nice. You always want to hook the front part of this first, just like that. Throw our little pin in here with a flat side. Can you see this? Flat, flat side right there. Just push that all the way forward. Gotta line that up. Of course, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see as well. Okay, so you just line that up forward just like that. And then this pinch is down. Back down just like that. You push the pin in, you're good to go. Just like that. So, yeah, the advantage of this one, you can change out this buttstock if you like. Um, but they operate exactly the same. The only thing I would suggest, you upgrade this. It's just... Like I said, for under $20, you can get an aftermarket um, red dot sight and drastically improve it because this one is not very good. But the gun's a lot of fun. We were getting, um, on the warm day, we were getting about seven magazines out of it, and that's about 175 shots, and that's with the uh, 5.1 uh, grain uh, Daisy uh, Zinc BBs. So they actually, and they perform, in my opinion, they perform the best. You saw what type of accuracy we're getting out of that. Um, so figure about seven magazines, 150, 175 shots, cooler weather, it's probably not going to do as well, but a lot of fun, um, not overly inexpensive, like I said, you're going to be running about 200 bucks close to it for each, although I have seen them on sale, so it looked for the sales. But overall, I'm going to give these four stars, they're getting four stars, and um, they're a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And you gotta remember, these rate pretty high on the cool factor as well. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detectives. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. Um, if you'd like to be notified of future videos, please hit the uh, little bell right here. And please 
give us some feedback. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. Um, Cause we're always taking suggestions to see how we can improve these videos and maybe be a, even a little bit more entertaining for you. So with that, thanks for tuning in to the Airgun Detectives where we take the mystery out of the airgun.